So as mentioned in the previous video, we finally actually managed to have all of the pathology, all the lab tests and everything done for all the different boas and everything for IBD and all that other fun zoonic disease nonsense, as well as the long enough time period from the very last snake of quarantine finally being cleared, everyone's healthy, everyone's good. So we're moving them in out of quarantine from that building into the main snake building that way, which we're going to right now. And then the new ones from Tinley will be moving into this quarantine as well. So with that being said, it's finally time that we're actually gonna be moving them into this. So I'm gonna go now go through a little bit pre-recorded and show you exactly what new ones that have been sitting in quarantine, some of them for almost a full year now, we'll be moving into the new building. This is Phantom. He is a supposed male Northern White Lip. Um, picked him up from someone who was needing to get out. It was just a little too much for them and, or their time or something like that. But he was just, it was too good of a deal to walk away. And after working with uh, my friends from Brady and Exotics a couple times at the shows, I was like, yeah, let's do that. And so he's moving to this one for now until I get him into a larger actual enclosure but he's been feeding very well in his quarantine, um, just a little tub. And so he's gonna go into this one until I can get to a point where I can put him in an actual enclosure and then move onwards and upwards as he gets some size. But he was really good. He peed on me a little bit when I first pulled him out um, and I'm trying to put him back in, but now he is, uh, he is wrapped up on my finger. And let's see, you gonna go in? You gonna go in, Phantom? You got it, buddy, come on. Come on, come on, Phantom. Come on, Phantom. You got this. The rack is a little stuck. It's a little stiff going in, so I don't wanna try to push it in and have him shudder. There we go, perfect. Who says the Northern White Lips are super reactive? And but yeah, no, they totally are, guys. It's, yeah, not beginner snakes. Anyway, moving on. This one is Athena. So if I was found by someone who was moving out of state. They couldn't take her but they absolutely loved her very much. Um, and she is actually a very sweet girl, but because she's been in quarantine for so long and I try to stay very hands off, she's definitely a little bit more antisocial and she's very confused at the moment. So you can see that she's a little, little tentative about what's going on. So those really long tongue flicks, she's figuring out what's going on, but you can tell by her body language that she's a little wary at the moment. She's not quite sure what's going on, but Athena is a Guyana boa, really nice, amazing looking saddle. She's a beautiful little girl. Um, and unfortunately she's been in quarantine for a very, very, very long time. Cause it just kept, um, it kept repeating every time an animal comes into quarantine, it just keeps restarting. So she's actually been in quarantine for, Oh, 10, almost 10 months now. So yep. She's, she's in here. She's good to go. She's doing really good. Nice and healthy, cleared her arena virus tests and everything. So She'll be moving into this for a little while and then eventually onwards and upwards like everything else. Um, don't have a whole lot of full grown animals um, in quarantine. So they're all going into these probably larger racks than what most people put them in. And then eventually they'll be moving on to larger cages as they get older. So continuing. This is probably the easiest of the three pine snakes that are moving in. Um, they were all kept in racks, probably a little too small, unfortunately very hands-off not a whole lot of interaction with them so they're all very defensive uh very reactive they just don't like to be messed with and i'm going to do my best not to have too much of their um very intimidating hiss and striking just as a defense mechanism on camera it's a good it's a good way to actually see a really cool defense and an adaptation that they have but i don't like to show you know, I don't like to have animals that are being very stressed out and very anxious on camera if I can help it. But because this is them moving into, I was just kind of keeping you guys in the loop. This is part of the transparency thing. So he has gone from a 41 quart rack to a quarantine uh, 32 quart for way too long in all honesty. So apologies to him on that one. Now he's moving to a 70 quart and then eventually he will probably be moving to a full four foot by two foot enclosure as I continue to upgrade and do better by everybody but he is an absolutely beautiful specimen of the black pine snake love him to death he's very very cool but it's going to be a long road of trust building with him and then the northern pines that i will introduce you to right now this is the female so this is a female northern pine snake 
Now, she did actually lay a clutch of infertile eggs last year before I got her. Um, and actually, even once I got her, she did lay a final and little infertile clutch. She's not very, she's not nearly as defensive as the black pine or the male northern, but she's very flighty, very, very flighty, and she likes to run, and she's very fast. Um, and as you can see, she's already curled straight up to the back, wants to get away. So again, these were very hands-off animals. They were kept for eventual breeding purposes, and it didn't work out for the person who had them. So I have them now. So I'm going to leave them alone now. They're going to be back in this nice little stable, stable little tub. And as you can see, it's nice. We all know, we all have our things about tubs, but you know, I'm being transparent again with everybody. So here's the little tub that she's going to be in. Her boyfriend's going to go right above her, right above the black pine snake. And we're going to slowly work on handling and trust building with these guys. Okay, so here's the big boy. This is the big male northern pine. He's in shed. He's always angry. Doesn't want to be messed with. And I don't give him any fret for that in all honesty. So he's not a happy little camper. But again, I'm showing you this is the reality of sometimes getting in adult animals that haven't been worked with or well socialized. So I'm going to shut him up. And I'm just going to give him plenty of time to adjust. I'm going to give him a few days to settle down after he sheds. I'll give him a nice little small sized rat. And hopefully he will do much better in a much more appropriately sized enclosure. Don't worry, buddy. I got you. I got you. Okay, so this is the one that actually isn't going in this building. This is actually going into the room where all of the old world rat snakes and geckos reside. Because this is a Kunisher Island Japanese rat snake. Now, he is a, not, he's, he's okay, but he's just very defensive. Like, I just got done, like, manhandling him, so he's not super happy. Um, this is a very temporary, very temporary tub. Um, he is going into a four-foot enclosure, but with all of the, uh, you know, all of the issues that we've had over the last week or so has prevented me from being able to pick up a four-foot cage that is waiting for me to just come and grab. And that's what he will be moving into. He'll be moving on top of a stack of four foot cages and it'll just be one more right on top and that's where he's going to be residing but for the time being until i have probably next week whenever that'll be the date that i'm recording this uh that i'll have a chance to go up and actually grab it that's when he'll be moving but he'll be stuck in this little guy for at least for a little bit unfortunately so he's really cool the kunishra island rat snakes are an island so the in japan it's an archipelago and there are Japanese rat snakes on several of the islands, but Kunisha Island, which I'm probably mispronouncing, so anyone who's watching, don't yell at me too bad, um, is one particular island where it is almost a locale where these animals have more of like a turquoise, bluish hue to them. Really, really cool. And supposedly, according to one, one viewer who watched my Japanese rat snake video, there's actually another pattern morph or pattern variety that they call tiger sometimes in Japan that I don't think I've... I've only ever seen one or two pictures of them from people who live in like Singapore and stuff. So I'm not sure if there are any in the United States. So if any of you guys have those, let me know because that'd be pretty cool. That being said, he's getting nice and grumpy. So I'm going to put him away before he, uh, they, they can be pretty flighty. So I'm going to put him back before he takes off. Okay, this one's been really fun. This is the second of the two boas that we were waiting for the test. And again, apologies for the flies. So we saw Athena who's one of the true red tails. She's a boa constrictor, constrictor, Guyana. This is another true boa constrictor, but a different subspecies. And at this point, any of my boa people probably know exactly what this little girl is. This is an Argentinian boa. She's actually pos het for T positive. However, she's pretty dark and I'm planning on using her as an outcross for our max pink boa to try to diversify up that line and then either acquire um, another one down the road or a different or another max pink from uh, ancient down the road to put back in down the road again down the road down the road down the road to try to have a little bit more of a diversified gene pool because these guys have been a CITES listed animal for quite a while so there are no more wild caught Argentinian bows coming into the United States which limits the gene pool which creates almost a genetic bottleneck it's not it technically is but not quite to the definition that we usually term it as. So to try to have as distinctive and unrelated genes as possible going into breeding as I can. She's actually usually pretty good, but again, she's been in quarantine for quite some time. So she's a little hands off, not quite sure what's going on. 
but she's definitely very food responsive. And so I'm going to slide her back in and give her a couple days to settle before I offer her mm, probably a large mouse because these guys, that's the name of the game, especially with the true constrictors, is low and slow. That is a healthy, grown animal. This girl is uh, pretty old, and she's very, very stout. She's a lot thicker. It's a very heavy-bodied boa of the different boa subspecies. So that being said, really looking forward to her, and I'm going to go grab the very last one, and hopefully we don't have a bite on camera for him. Not quite last, and definitely not least, this is a species of python that a lot of people, including myself, forget about. So this is a spotted python. It's one of the two, well, it's in the genus Anteresia, and this is famous for the anthill python being the smallest python in the world. Not the smallest snake, but the smallest python. The spotted is one of, one of the two very famous species, formerly three, the children's and the spotted. There was a Stimson, but now the Stimson has been reclassified as basically just a subspecies or locality of, I believe, the children's. Yeah, it's just the children's and the spotted now. Now, this little guy is one feisty little blighter. I can tell you that right now. He has once grabbed a mouse from me, and then before I could be done shutting his quarantine drawer, immediately tried to bite me with a mouthful of mouse. So that's why I said hopefully we will not get a bite from him. I've been asked multiple times to talk about these guys, but I don't have a lot of experience, but I also understand that they can be a very good intermediate pet snake. Their care is relatively simple, but they can be very feisty. And seeing as how I got this guy as an adult, um, definitely a little bit more feisty as well. So lots of time now that will be spent now that everybody is out of quarantine to working with these animals to build some trust and to have a little bit safer working things, especially for people who uh, want to help me when they are down here at the ranch. So the last one um, was very recently highlighted, but we actually have to change him into a different container because the container that he is in um, will not work in this main building. So uh, that'll be a little bit longer, so I'll be right back with the very last one. But yeah, this guy, really cool species of python. They're really, really cool. Always get forgot about, constantly overlooked. But they can be a little a little quick on the draw at times. But hopefully we'll see. We'll develop a little bit of a relationship and I can do a species spotlight. Sorry, forgive the camera shaking. Still haven't found my gun. Um, really, really cool species of snake again. Hopefully we can develop a really cool relationship and a better working understanding of working with this species before I go and just tell you a whole bunch of stuff about it that may not 100% be correct. Here's the last one. My new little favorite girl, at least for the time being, this is the species that I was looking for for like three years that had a really hard time tracking down, the Pseudolaphae flavorifa. And I absolutely love these guys. They're so, so cool. This is my little girl. She's head anery. There was a male anery that was an adult that's been on Morph Market for like, it feels like half a year. But I really like the normal ones, and I really wanted a little one to kind of bond with. These guys are absolutely amazing. And yeah, she seems to be settling in just fine. And that's it for all of the new additions, really. Just this little girl. Here's her little setup, the full setup, I guess. We'll zoom out. So this is going to be her setup for at least for the next few months or so. She is growing like a weed, though. I feel like she's shedding like every two weeks, honestly. But... Either way, love her to death. It's really fun now that we have the new ones that we picked up from Tinley going into uh, quarantine as well as all of these guys coming out of quarantine. That will be more than likely, barring any like unforeseen circumstances or some, someone approaching me or a surrender or a deal just too good to walk away from, that will be the last of the ones for the rest of this year. So... Hope you guys enjoyed the video showing off some cool little snakes. So, you know, it was more than just ball pythons and boas. I had some fun little oddballs here and there for everyone to enjoy. Um, as well as, hey, the owner of Athena, if you are still subscribed, um, there you go. Here's Athena. That's, that's how she's doing. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more reptile com uh, content. Please like and subscribe if you can. And we'll check you next time.